Okay, what we're going to do here today is show you the old school Italian well method for uh, hand mixing pizzelli dough or pizzelle dough. Um, at the same time, we're also going to show you the improvement that the KitchenAid has offered uh, to the process. Um, what I'm going to do here, or what I have here, is the Italian well. What you see is you take all of your dry ingredients, you lay them out on your pastry board or your counter, wherever you're going to be making them, and then you put all of your wet ingredients, you, you hollow out a little hole, and you put all of your wet ingredients inside. I've already um, schmutzed everything together, so it's already mixed, uh, pre-mixed in there, but typically you would have your shortening, your eggs, your flavors, and you would mix those up with your hand first, and then gradually start incorporating the dry. So I've already got everything mixed in the middle. Um, in the interest of saving time, I did the same thing on my KitchenAid here. And what I'm going to do is get this going first so it's going to have a head start. But you will see uh, how much faster this is. I'll keep this hand dry and um, basically I'll start this off first, get it going, and then I'll start doing the well method. And I'll show you how much longer and how much more effort this takes over this. So this really was a blessing uh, given the number of uh, cookies that I make each year. Um, and uh, in, in Ellen's defense, they didn't have these really uh, with the dough hooks back in her day anyway. So anyway, let's get going. Uh, we have the nutcracker in the background. You probably won't be able to hear it uh, over the mixer, but um, the mixer won't be going too long. So once again, uh, to do the dough in the mixer, you get everything blended and then you go to a two setting and you put in your, you just uh, gradually start putting in your flour and all of your dry ingredients. Very, uh, it's very similar to what this is doing right here, but just uh, kind of opposite. So you're just gradually mixing in your flour. Basically, it'll start incorporating itself with the dough hook and coming together. Once again, the first time you hear this thing start to lug down, your, your dough's coming together, and then you, you knock it back to one, and you let it continue to come together until the sides are clean. Whoops. So it's already actually starting to come together just as I'm finishing spooning everything in. This isn't the best bowl for this, so I just spilled a little bit. Okay, so that's going. We're going to show you the well method. Basically, you start scooshing and bringing in some of your um, some of your dry ingredients. You can either use this hand, or you can start sprinkling. Is what I like to do, and I just go around the edges so everything doesn't um, run away. And I'm just bringing more and more of the dough into the wet mixture here until it starts to come together. You can hear the KitchenAid's already starting to lug a little bit on setting number two. <laughs> okay, so that's um, pretty much come together already. So we're going to set it down to one, which I just did, and we're going to let it come together fully until the sides are clean. And what I'm doing here is I'm keeping one hand dry and one hand wet and I'm starting to smutch everything together. And that's still coming together there. Okay, what you see here is we have a gelatinous uh, kind of a, whoops, a little bit of a, okay, so now we're going to bring this in, okay, okay. So, I can show you right here, we'll stop that and start this. What we have is a very nice... ...ball of dough. 
all together, all mixed up. That was what, a couple of minutes? So we're gonna listen to the nutcracker and start, continue to bring this, the rest of this dough together here and mix this up and I'll also show you how to roll it out. So, so we're just bringing more and more just start bringing it all together and when it firms up a little bit and it's not too squishy then I'll bring my other hand into the play here but right now we're just bringing all the all of the uh, wet and dry together and it's starting to take form a little bit more and, and we'll just start rolling this in I think it's time I can Start using two hands. Clean off that one hand. Okay, so, and like I said, this is a bit um, primitive, but that's the way they used to, the old ladies used to do it, and the way I was originally taught, and it takes obviously much longer to bring the, the dough together, and it's a little bit messier and everything else, but. That's what you had to do, I reckon. So. So we just keep bringing the dough together and listen to the nutcracker. Pas de doux. And our dough is starting to now come together. So. Basically, pastry board. You need a pretty good sized one based on the size of the recipe. I just shared a, a YouTube video actually from some lady and her family in Italy, I believe Abruzzi somewhere, and she had a much smaller recipe, it appeared to be. But this is the recipe that Ann Helen used and worked by hand. And remember, she was only about 4 foot 11. So, so. We're still bringing everything together. And we've got a little bit of a mess, which is why I don't do this anymore. But you gotta just bring everything in and keep working it in until it all comes together. So we're starting to get some pretty good incorporation there and it's drying up a little bit and uh, getting a little bit more hard starting to roll everything in so we're still working the dough this is like John Henry versus the steam engine and <laughs> the steam engine pretty much kicked his butt. So. And once I'm done bringing this together, I'll show you how they would uh, roll them out by hand, which was also on the video this morning. But, uh, you know, to be frank, it all gets schmutzed in the hot Pizzelli iron anyway, so it really doesn't matter whether you roll it out or cut it into rectangles, which is what I do, because it's faster. When I first did this, it took me, what, 20 minutes or so to mix, to get all of the ingredients, mix them together by hand, and then cook at the lower temperatures that I was taught how to do it on. So a batch of cookies took between three and four hours. Um, using the KitchenAid, and working a little bit harder in front of the stove, which Dan Helen couldn't have done anyway because she was just tiny. Um, I got it down to about an hour and 15 minutes. So you see I'm picking up all my dry ingredients now. Everything's coming together on the board. And I'm just gonna show you very briefly one of the, uh, how you roll it out. Basically, I'm just picking up all of my dry ingredients. And one thing Helen once told me was, don't 
overwork the dough or it will crack. And I've seen that once or twice, but basically what I do is I substitute some of my dry flavorings for um, liquid form. So it makes the dough a little bit um, easier to work. Okay, we're going to clean the hands off here. Okay. So, this is like the sides of the bowl coming clean, which was several minutes ago. I'll pick up a little bit of that too. Okay. Okay, we've got everything collected. So much easier using the KitchenAid. Not the greatest thing since sliced bread, but quite possibly close. Anyway, so we'll get the hands cleaned off, and then I'll wash them. So, okay, we got all our stuff off of the hands, and I'm sure that there are people that can do this much better than I can, but I haven't done it in years because you don't need to. Okay. So this is my ball of dough that I've hand formed. Oh, come on out. And this is my ball of dough that I have kitchenated. And actually this is, uh, we started with the same temperature, same eggs, same butter, everything else. And this is a little bit cooler because this has been hand worked. So this is actually a little bit firmer dough. Okay. But basically you make a jelly roll. Like that. And we'll set this one aside. And we have our jelly roll here sized uh, item. So how I was taught to portion this was basically just go down and cut a bunch of small pieces out like that and then with these small pieces just basically roll them out and you kind of spread your fingers while you're rolling so you get something that looks like this and then you just go along the line and you cut uh, approximate to your pizzelli about like that and like that and these are your pieces that would go in one other thing uh, the way you hold the pizzelli iron uh, the round pieces had a tendency to roll off the front of the iron if it was tilted a little bit so I'll do one more just to show you again how it's done or how it was done and there's also that video on uh, YouTube Okay, so we've rolled another one out. And there you have it. Uh, so I think. Now, these were longer, and actually they fit a little bit better into the rectangle, so they almost filled the whole thing up. Once again, I don't have time, so what I do is this. I get my other ball of dough. And remember, I ship uh, in stacks of four, so I cut it in half, and I cut it in half again, and then I cut each one of those quarters into thirds. I schmutz into a uh, rectangular looking thing here, cut, 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 you're done. And the good thing is, this is rectangular. So it's harder for it to roll off of a hot iron. When you're cooking and working really fast, uh, that's an issue. So anyway, that is the Italian well method of how to bring together dough. And also the Italian KitchenAid well method, if you would. So, happy holidays. And happy Pizzelle making. Pizzelli making, however you like to say it. Um, 
Actually, I heard an interesting way that um, it was pronounced. So, anyway, and I just um, just put the wrong dough on the wrong thing. So, we're good. Because we're cooking the double batch today, this morning, or this morning and this afternoon, and we're going to cook some more tonight. So, i got to get moving, because I'm moving a little slow last night, because I was, of course, at the Nutcracker, which we're listening to now. So, everybody, have a wonderful holiday, and keep up the traditions, whatever they may be. Love you and cheers. Pizzelli Man, out. <laughs>